And we're looking at three names that are reporting in today's edition of Three Buys and a Bail. Joining me now is CNBC contributor Gina Sanchez. She is chief market strategist at Lido Advisors. Gina, it's great to have you. All right, let's just run right through this. United Health is your first buy. And the shares, by the way, hitting an all-time high of it ahead of earnings next Thursday. What, what do you like about it? Well, so this is a stock and a company that has been driving both top line and bottom line growth, and that is extremely important. They just had a setback because uh, their uh, acquisition of Charge Healthcare um, uh, was blocked by the DOJ. However, they've just announced a new acquisition um, uh, of LHC Group, which is which would add to their home health uh, offering. And everything that this company has been doing is about growing, like I said, that top and bottom line growth. And you like to lean in when they're at all time highs or does that do you feel like it's already priced? Uh, I don't want to say it, but priced for perfection. Well, you know, it's interesting you say that this company is actually trading at only a, a, a modest uh, um, premium to uh, to the S&P 500 with regard to, P and, to, to to its P.E. So if you look at it from a valuation standpoint, it's not extremely overvalued. Um, and we actually still see some upside here. And if we go into that really negative scenario where we see a recession, which we don't necessarily buy into, but this is actually a, a very, very good recession um, proof stock. And so, you know, this is a, a stock that is showing that it can perform. If we have a really negative scenario, it's actually a great stock to own. And so there's a lot of reasons to own this stock, and we don't think it's too expensive right now. Sure. And so United Health uh, is one name that you'd like. The next is Albertsons, has a similar feel to it. Consumer Staples, a little more defensive. Its shares, I think, have doubled over the past year. They report before the bell on Tuesday. But again, more exposed on the labor side. They just reached a deal, I think, to avoid a worker strike. Uh, why do you like them? So, you know, Albertsons is one of those stories, and it's a stock that, um, you know, that is very good in, a, in, in the face of inflation. And if there's one thing that we do think might linger, it's that inflation story. Um, and, you know, as soon as we saw the invasion of Ukraine, um, Albertsons really popped up basically saying, nope, you know, this is not, the reopening is, is not going to hurt us. We're still in demand. Um, and, you know, th this is a company that has also been driving tremendous growth. And it's actually trading at a discount, not only to the S&P, but also to the, you know, the sort of the food a segment of the S&P. And so, you know, the food retailers generally trade at a discount um, to the S&P 500. Um, but here's one that you're picking up even at a better value uh, with really strong growth. All right. Albertson's up just under 3 percent today. Let's move along to your pair trade and financials because that's really uh, what everyone will be focused on next week. We'll start with J.P. Morgan. I'm going to say it. No surprise. You think it's a buy. Everyone loves this one, even though it is down 20 percent the past three months. Yeah, you know, the banks have all gotten hit really hard. I think the outlook um, around these recession fears, the concern around inflation, the Fed raising rates, and even the potential for um, those rate hikes to cause an inversion uh, in the yield curve, none of that looks great for banks, obviously. Um, however, you know, J.P. Morgan is a company that has shown that it can execute, and it got this double whammy in terms of, of, of getting hit, not only with all the fears I just talked about, but also because they announced OPEX spending. And everybody always gets nervous when a bank announces, uh, you know, operations mm -hmm. uh, expenditures because they're concerned they're not going to be able to, to execute. But this is a bank that has a track record on that execution. And so we actually think it's a really good deal right now. Yeah, it's traded poorly ever since that earnings announcement. You're right. And maybe this one will turn things around. We shall see. The flip side is Citigroup, which you're still warning. Uh, this is your bail today. Not a big fan of the name. By the way, it's kind of moved in lockstep with J.P. Morgan. So for all the quality differences here, they're not trading that differenti differentiatedly. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'll tell you, Citibank, it, it's a bit of a stinker. They have, you know, continued to have to slog through their, you know, the, you know, the, the reorganization of, of the company, and there's still a lot of wood left to chop. And now the one thing you could say about Citigroup is expectations are so low um, that any execution uh, could actually cause a, a small, a small rally. Um, but we think that there's, it's still um, a bit too uncertain. Uh, in order for them to sort of prove that they've turned themselves around. And so from that perspective, there's just a bit more risk in that stock. All right. Uh, and so if I see Citigroup trading in lockstep with J.P. Morgan, I'll take J.P. Morgan every day of the week. All right. J.P. Morgan, Albertsons, United Health. that's the basket. Uh, Gina, thank you very much. We appreciate it.
Gina Sanchez, three buys and a bail this week. Still ahead with the major averages mix, we'll get a check on today's biggest movers after the break. Dow's up 231, NASDAQ down 122.